Welcome, everybody, to Between the Lines. I'm Sarah Eden. I'm here with the usual Tracy Hunter Abramson, Sean and Bessie and Esther Hatch. And today we are joined by two pretty fantastic people, Jake Stormone and Ryan Bailey. They are what is known in the biz as fancy film people. <laughs> and they're here to spend some time with us today. So thank you for joining us. Oh, so fancy. Thank you for the new uh, CV title. I appreciate it. That's right. You know, I'm here to help you out. Pad that resume a little. <laughs> Add the word fancy in a few different places and it'll sell it every time. It needs it. Oh, it needs good it. To know. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know. That's a trade. trade secret. Exactly. That's why my film career has really taken off. I mean, I can't. So far, so good, to be honest. Yeah. Right. You kidding? I am uh, batting a thousand right now, guys. Literally every film I've been involved with is thus far a success. So a thundering success. Yeah. Really, really, truly. Yeah. <laughs> and for those who are super confused, <laughs> I should explain. Jake and Ryan and I are all uh, part of the soon to be filmed, hopefully very soon to be released near you, a uh, film adaptation of my book, Seeking Persephone. So yay, starting yes, out with a bang that. here. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pretty excited. Um, this is the point okay. in the podcast where we usually read very official, very flattering bios of our guests. But because I'm in charge today, I'm going a different route. I've written oh. Oh, good. bios for them. Okay, well, these are always so good. <laughs> we've we've all gone through this, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I was like, oh, okay, okay, great. So everyone okay. has to go through this for exactly. Okay. It's part yeah. of the initiation. It's rite of passage. Why yeah. did I get yes. nervous? <laughs> Tracy's the only person <laughs> whose bio has included accusations of crime. So that's I right. Think probably Until hope now, that you see Tracy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> great. Great. So, all right. Yeah, you all don't know the whole I'm former CIA thing, huh? So do now. That would be why yeah. Sarah has a tendency of fictionalizing oh my gosh. aspects of my life. That's right. Fictionalizing. Now I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> can we do a podcast on that? That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, I can accuse her of a lot of things. Some of them might be true, but she's not allowed to say. So so you guys have an advantage of not having a security clearance, so you can fight back if you need to, just so you know. This All just right, took such a left turn, and I'm here <laughs> for it. I'm... Let's go. Right. Let's Welcome go. to Between the Lines. I love it. Okay, All left turns. Uh, I feel like I should Tell be like backlit now and just a silhouette. Exactly. Like... <laughs> Begin our interrogation. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Well, then let me tell you what this secret organization has learned about you, Jake Stormone. <laughs> okay, I'll go. <laughs> All right, Jake Stormone is an actor, yes. a director, and an entrepreneur. He has a kind of wackadoodle dog that I'm borderline <laughs> obsessed with. He uh, has recently and frequently made the mistake of laughing at my jokes when I'm being kind of ridiculous, <sighs> so which everyone already. who knows me will tell you is always a mistake because it encourages me to be even weirder. That's Jake Stormone, guys. Sorry, all true, all true. That's right. So that again, wasn't bad at all. You need no, to work that on that. that was good. I, I can breathe I gotcha. easy now. Yeah, okay. that was good. Okay, here we go. Ryan Bailey. Hmm. Ryan Bailey is an actor, a model, and a very talented artist. She also has a dog that I am determined is destined to be my very sophisticated best friend. Um, I have recently discovered that Ryan is an excellent co-conspirator. And we have undertaken many top secret plans involving the uh, shooting and production of this film that we have not told Jake about yet. And he should well, probably be very afraid. No, this is true. Uh, that is Ryan Bailey. on my side for a second. Very true. I was going to say, we will talk later. Yeah, oh, great. I great. Great. Yeah. Oh, Tracy's an enabler. The minute I tell her great. what we're Perfect. up to, she's on my side again. Sorry, Jake. <laughs> And she will be with these I plans be that we have. We'll need to know at some point. That is the key. Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. think I would, but I actually have a lot of questions about Ryan's uh, bio. <laughs> <laughs> Namely, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> no. You you can ask, you but at, we won't answer. You look answer. so coy. Look at, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? Drink my water. Well, and you can <laughs> ask Sean when Tracy and I co-conspire it involves taking costumes to europe <laughs> for a secret photo shoot <laughs> in a carry-on yes what? all we had all we had was carry-ons and she made the space for 
a week. And anyway, you'll have to hear the story, but oh my gosh, pictures for Halloween part two of this podcast. Perfect in Paris, it was bad. Targeted one. I love it. But we can say that between Esther and Sean are both examples of the fact that the one who looks most innocent may not be. So, mm. <laughs> just Take notes that over here. That's mm -hmm. good. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So just so you know what we're up against when we start shooting this. Love I it. come with plans <laughs> and I'm not afraid to see them through. So, it's going to be fun. So, speaking of plans, my first yes. question is why acting? No, I, sh I should phrase that, that question better. Why acting? <laughs> what brought you to this place in life? That's a valid you're, question, you're though. Right. Let's let's be clear on that. Your your first instinct was correct there. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. Because that's how people answer. say, "Why are you a writer?" So I figured it's probably the same with acting. Yeah, yeah. it's applicable for sure. Uh, go ahead, Ryan. I didn't want to interrupt you. I apologize. Oh, oh, okie dokie. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's very true. Uh, most of my career has been very artistic. And so I feel like when people ask me about it, it's very much a, oh, how's that hobby going? You know? And I go, oh, no, I actually like do this all day, every day. And I make a living off of it. So I don't know if that's considered a hobby at this point. <laughs> um, I, why acting? That is a very good question. And to preface, I need to say, you have to be a little bit um weird or or maybe insane maybe just the smallest amount to want to act <laughs> or i mean i feel like just to make money as a creative you have to be a little bit um out of your mind yeah uh <laughs> i feel like i know you're looking at the screen i'm like she's looking at me every time she says this. This is, uh, we're all actually, looking at you. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy <laughs> sorry I, yeah sorry i'll stop interrupting go ahead yes because you're right thank you. you're right you're absolutely right <laughs> um, <laughs> I, but why acting is because of my mom, actually. Uh, I never, I didn't really have a choice because I was super shy as a kid and I wouldn't talk to anybody. I would all, I would hide behind her actually. And she didn't know what to do with me. And she's like, oh, well, if I put this girl on a stage, maybe that will help her overcome her fear. And surprise, it actually did because my first show was the Aristocats. And it was, it was very cute. It was a very cute production. And I was mortified to discover that I was cast as one of the geese. Uh, sweet little Amelia and Abigail. I still know the song and I won't sing it for you now. Um, unless you someone can. pays me. That's fine. We don't mind. You want to, you want to Venmo me? Jake? Yeah. Let me get right, okay. get right on this. See, wait, yeah. we're all creatives. That means we're all broke. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's happen. true. Yeah. Uh, it's true. So, so that was my first intro to the stage. And once I got on and realized I had to, as an eight year old, like shake my little booty on stage, but not as Ryan, but as Amelia, the goose, it something clicked in my brain that I, I could be weird or I could be a different character and it didn't matter what people thought about me. And so then after that, all through high school, I just kept doing shows and loved it. And the past few years have been more dedicated to film rather than theater. Um, and it's just been a wild ride. Could I jump in real fast? Please. Cause you, you said you were super young when you did Aristocats cause you've done a lot of theater since. Yeah. I, a decent amount. Yeah. I feel like when we, I, okay, I could be wrong. I feel like you've done so a lot. No, I feel like you've done a lot of shows, and it's, it's to be applauded. It's oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Can't keep me away. I love the stage. That's awesome. What I'm hearing is we need to add a scene to Seeking Persephone that involves Persephone shaking her tail feathers. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you know that feels right. To I me. didn't know you had. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> well, I didn't put it on my resume, to be fair. Is that something you need to I add? need to rewrite your CVs, like, mm. clearly. Mm. <laughs> All right, Jake, time to go through some actor therapy. Why Why acting? <laughs> I should have answered first. My answer's not nearly as good as that. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm just a big nerd. I'm a big, I'm a big geek. I love fantasy true. and sci-fi. <laughs> Ryan knows. This is very true. Um, and so for me, I just, 
honestly, from a very young age, I just wanted to be Indiana Jones or a Jedi or, or a knight, a Jedi knight or a knight or Indiana <laughs> Jones. And um, so my childhood was spent just like in the woods behind my house with, you know, a wooden sword and plastic armor. And, um, and I tell people it took way too long, like honestly, an embarrassingly long time into adulthood. Um, <laughs> I should have known better to realize that uh, I was far better trying based on my interests, the Harrison Ford route instead of the Indiana Jones route. Um, because I like, I went to archeology span camp. I minored in history. I, uh, we clung to that way too long before realizing that um, I didn't get to save the world from the Ark of the Covenant being open. So um, when I finally figured that out, uh, I tried to turn it into a career and somehow, knock on wood, it has, it has worked, I guess. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. There must be something about archaeology, though, Jake, because actually I am an archaeologist. So, what? What, that, like, we, by, like an actual one? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, by here. degree, I will say by degree, I did work for a little while as an archaeologist, but not oh. very long. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. So the you real. Know there's no boulders yeah. chasing you. Yeah. You're, you're but... <laughs> drawing out grids with string and toothbrushes, which is, yeah. which is great. Which is yeah, fun. but the the real theme between all these though, right. writing, acting, archaeology is like nobody thinks you can do them, right? <laughs> so no, I think I think there's so something true. in our persona here that is like <laughs> we we have to go the hard way. I love that kindred <laughs> spirits. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> probably. That's true. great. Hmm. Okay, well my answer is okay then. I take it back. No, oh, <laughs> your, answer, your answer was fabulous. But I have to say, I'm never going to watch the Aristocats the same way again. Because, same. because oh, I actually have a granddaughter named Abigail. And so even when she was little, those geese have had a special place in our hearts. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, okay. Amazing. So let me ask you you've obviously had both of you lots of experience in the theater on film most of us have not had exposure to what goes on behind the scenes we love the finished product but tell us now what what comes next as far as your prep for making this movie and then once you're on set what will your schedule look like with seeking persephone specifically i i assume we're talking about now. sure or you can fall back on some of your other experience because i'm sure that you um you know you've gone through it before but what are you mm -hmm. anticipating or what do you what do you see in your immediate future i guess I'll yeah you want to jump in on this, on this one um <laughs> I, I, I went first last time <laughs> i i would say it it honestly um there's so much that goes into any film that's made um i had a friend once joke and it's so true uh every movie made is a miracle i mean it like it <laughs> really is and and so depending on what hat you're wearing that answer is going to vary quite a bit i would say um if you're coming in as an actor um uh, there's a lot of work that's been done before you even show up um all the writing and the casting and the rewrites and 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 things like that and then um people are looking at locations and they're they're planning budgets and they're seeing based on the budget, how long of a film shoot can we afford? Um, your average independent movie these days, I would say, um, at least the ones that I've had experience with and Ryan, feel free to jump in is, is probably a three to three and a half week shoot. So 15 to 17 shooting days. And then you usually have weekends off or you're, you can shift that, you, but, but typically a five, five day shooting week. Um, and a lot of people that alone, they're like, wait, what, what, how are you, you're making a whole movie in 15 days. Um, we don't know either. Yep. Somehow it gets done. <laughs> um, I I'm in post-production on a film that I directed right now. And that was a much more involved process. So I've been working on that since November of last year, Ryan starred in that. That's how we actually met. Um, yeah. and she did fantastic. So look for that. But, um, so, so there's so much to be said here. And I think, I think it really depends on, like I said, what hat you're wearing. Are you producing? Are you directing? Are you just acting? Are you writing and producing? Are you, uh, in the case of John, um, our director on Seeking Persephone, he oftentimes will direct and 
camera op, and then he'll have a focus puller um, that he's worked with a lot. So, so there's a lot of, of um, kind of cross pollination of, of tasks and duties um, with seeking Persephone specifically. This has been, I don't know, gang, how long have we been talking about this? Six months we've been overall it, at talking least. Yeah. about this. And, and so we've been planning in this case, we said, okay, what's the best path to take for this? Sarah was involved and adaptations can be so finicky at times. And, and um, the more people, the more cooks in the kitchen, the more opinions and the more job justification needs to be thrown in there. And sometimes an adaptation can deviate from the source material in a, in a very big way. Um, and so having Sarah with us has been uh, instrumental and crucial to that. But that has then very much um, narrowed down the paths that we discussed taking. And so we ultimately decided on crowdfunding this to keep as much of the creative control with us. And by us, I really mean with Sarah um, as possible. And, and so now that we have secured our funding, I would say the next step is we need to location scout. We need to cast, start casting and, and sending out um, breakdowns and auditions uh, for the other roles. Uh, we need to lock down a time frame and a location based on the scouts. Um, once those are done, we reevaluate budgets. Then we start looking at distribution. Then we start, I mean, there's, it's such a crazy process. And all of a sudden you have an hour and a half to two hour movie and it's done. And I'm sorry, I feel like I've been talking for 45 minutes now. No, um, it's, no. but it's, it's so fascinating. And, and I don't think that there's anybody in this group who doesn't completely get what you're saying because every single time a book is published, I look mm. at that book and think this is a miracle. This is yeah, a miracle. Yeah, yeah. I'm every sure. I'm time. sure. Yeah. And yes. so, yeah, whenever you're involved in that creative process and so many different factors coming together, uh, it, it really is. It's just like watching magic. Well, and, and then I'll, I'll pass the torch to Ryan in a second. <laughs> but just as one last example, the film that I directed, I'm in post-production on now, I'm currently overseeing and constantly fielding emails, um, giving approval or notes on color grading. So a lot of people forget that that's a very important thing to make it feel cinematic. Um, and of course, a Regency romance is going to have a very specific color palette that people are used to, even if they don't realize they're used to it. Mm -hmm. So there's color grading, mm -hmm. there's sound mixing, there's musical scoring. Um, my film has a lot of visual effects as well. And so those need to be put in and then those need to be color graded and mixed and foliated. And so there's, it's, it is a miracle. Like it's so crazy. <laughs> oh, it suddenly looks and, so exhausted. <laughs> and so many people lend such talents to it and you mm -hmm. don't realize that. And there's a reason that the, the scroll at the end of a movie, even an independent one goes yeah, on for so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Anyway, so I'm going to shut up now. I'm so I'm sorry. So heroes. <laughs> Right. No, don't apologize. I, I truly, it's it's really interesting to hear your perspective of things because I've only done the acting side. You know, you know what I mean. So, which what, is also very involved, though. Very true, and I mean the next, I mean few months before we start filming, whenever that happens, for an actor will look like, you know, preparing for the role in. Well, we have source material to go from. We have a book mm -hmm. to read. Yeah. And I have kind of, I lost count of how many times I've read it now. <laughs> um, but going through the book and the series, and then once we get the script, going through that and uh, character prep, I think is, especially when you're going to a completely different era that you weren't raised mm -hmm. in, you're not used to, you really have to step into someone else's shoes um, and different mannerisms, different ways of speaking, different beliefs. Uh, it's it it takes a lot of preparation to get there to make it feel authentic and not just like you, you know, right? If, slapped a sticker yeah. on something. Yeah. If we have yeah. time, do you do you have uh, have anything specifically that you do for character prep or that you plan to do for Persephone? Am I allowed to ask that? <laughs> yeah, ask all the questions you want. <laughs> so. I actually have a dialect coach uh, who I've been going over just, I, I'm in a different show right now that has a very similar dialect and I've been going over um, uh, that show and then seeking Persephone with her. And also I think I do my own research on how, whether that's with film or book or historical studies on how people would stand as especially as a woman in that time period where I would place my hands because in that era there's a lot of things that 
I do today that Persephone wouldn't do. Wouldn't. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. they, no hands on hips. There's just so many things that you don't think about until yeah. you're there. Yeah, you're not allowed <laughs> to do that. Those are just wise. listening. Yeah. I did the yeah. Z snap because that's what I associate with 19th century upper class ladies. <laughs> <laughs> they they do sass in a very different way. Yes. Uh, and yeah. you don't yep. think about yeah. it while you're watching the film, like the the watching Pride and Prejudice, the 2005 version. You don't, any version really, you don't think about it while you're watching. It just feels right. But there's a lot of work that those actors had to do to make it feel right before they even got on camera. Yeah, yeah rather, rather yeah. than trick the audience in the moment, it's it's to prevent you from being pulled out half the time. Yeah, right. You, know, right. you don't even realize that right. that you're watching. Like you said, so many things come together. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's true. Awesome. Well, and as someone who grew up in Britain, I, I know that if I ever hear an American actor putting on a British accent and it's not quite right, I'm immediately pulled out. Yeah. So no you pressure, can, guys. Yeah. You've got this. Great. <laughs> Great. So clearly no. Sean needs to be on on set. To it sounds sure like it. Dialect coach. You will all I, sound I, Welsh. <laughs> no, I barely sound Welsh anymore. So. <laughs> but it's true. It That's something else, too, that's so wonderful about the fact that you're going to be on location. For me, the only time I hear my accent is when I go back to Britain and I hear it getting stronger. And it's because mm. I am surrounded by people speaking the way I grew up speaking. Um, and so I think the same thing will happen for you, you know, as you're working with your dialect coach and then suddenly you're dropped into England and it will be like, oh, this is this is how it sounds. This is you just kind of absorb it. Yeah, it's a good uh, soundboard to go off of yeah, uh, sure. to check your accent, too. Mm -hmm. It keeps you in mm -hmm. line. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, true. okay, we're talking about you all writing, going into these historical roles. Do you have a specific type of character that you like to play or like a certain era? Ooh, anything not in the modern day, really. <laughs> Ryan's okay. my girl. <laughs> I feel the same way about writing. Hosts are like cheering you right now. Yeah. yeah. Like anything that, I mean, even the 80s would be fun, but like the 1980s, See? I mean. Sarah? But going further and further back in time, I think it's just more and more fun the further back you get. Uh, and I've been pretty lucky with the, I mean, I don't have a huge resume of film, but with the film I have done, most of it has been either fantasy or in placed in some other era. And uh, I think, I don't know if I have a favorite character, but I, I definitely have a favorite, yeah, type of role. Mm -hmm. So we have we have a running joke that I think the 1980s is historical and everyone else on this podcast is not agree with <laughs> I, think, Jay, see, I remember the 1980s. That is not historical. I was born in the 80s, so uh, you're maybe, historical feel, now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I'm like, thanks for that. Oh, Easy you're to actually an antiquity, a relic. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's like Indiana Jones. <laughs> okay, right, or Jake. How about you? Um, Favorite honestly, type of I would I would echo that quite a bit. To be honest, I. Um, I love, and I've always been drawn to growing up uh, literature that was kind of medieval fantasy and, and that sort of thing. I love that. Um, I love the idea of uh, before I ever had to worry about paying the bills or, or rent or mortgage, um, I would just live in my imagination in those worlds. And then to, to grow up and transition to a, a career where that's you know, what's required. And I've been very, very lucky in that um, I would say the bulk of my filmography has been honestly medieval fantasy, literally medieval fantasy. Um, I did a series that that was very lucky. We got four seasons and that was medieval fantasy. I played a, a night. Um, so there's a literal dream come true. Um, but I love I love those time periods as well. I love I right now I I fence longsword. I mean, I like I love that stuff. Um, so anytime that I can do that, uh, for the job and I've, I've probably spent more time speaking with an English dialect than, than my American one. So, um, so I do, I, I love it. I've been very, very lucky. Uh, and this is, is a time period now with Seeking Persephone that I've not played in yet. Um, that I'm really, really excited about because it still is 
it's another world. Like Ryan was saying, it's not just mm -hmm. another time. It's another world. Um, and, and it's one that, you know, for three minutes at a time, Ryan and I get to live it, you know, when they say action and cut, we get mm -hmm. to live it. And, um, and most people can't do that. So, uh, it's not lost on me and I'm, I love that. I love that you guys like get to live out these dreams. And I think like as authors, we feel that way too. Like about like who gets to do this, who gets to do this. It's so yeah, it's great. Cool. It really is. Yeah. And I love how you talked about how it being like a different world. And I will say this, Sarah's books, starting with Seeking Persephone, it is a different world. And there's <laughs> readers that love that world so much. And in general, as authors, we get in discussions a lot or more with readers, I would say, because most of us are readers too. Like what is better, the book or the movie? And like when your favorite book is going to be put on screen, there's this extreme excitement and also extreme nervousness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. No, yes. I was like, I know where this is going. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. As actors, directors, like people involved in the filmmaking process, what are some of the things that you feel like are the biggest challenges because they're real. Like I, I always kind of shrug when people say that about the movies, cause I'm like, they really can't do it like the book. Like you're in that person's head all the time mm -hmm. in the book. So what are the things that you can do to overcome like some of those challenges as you're taking something that's a, such a different format and moving it into a film? That's a great question. That's a good question. <laughs> Did you have uh, answer, ask the hard hitting questions around yeah. here? I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, and I, and I want to answer this with everything that I have. Um, I will say uh, you brought up an interesting point with how oftentimes in the book, it is told through someone's perspective. And so you hear their inner monologue throughout the entire thing. And in a movie, you lose that unless you just have constant dialogue of someone just whispering. Not okay. You're <laughs> always talking to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which... I mean, we could do, I guess, but these characters aren't like crazy, so they don't just talk to themselves <laughs> out loud most of the time. I mean, the actors are, the characters are not. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've established that. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that was an interesting thing. I remember in my audition, a lot of it was very word for word or as close as possible to the actual book, but it was her, um, Persephone, instead of speaking in her mind, it was her conversing with her sister um, about these questions she has, or just, she's still like putting these thoughts out into the universe and treating them like they're, oh, just coming to her. Um, but instead of just inside her brain, she has someone for those thoughts to pass through, a, a scene partner, if you will. And so I feel like um, while keeping it true to the book and still having all those moments that we'd love, altering it for film means that you have to I don't make some changes or adjustments to have things still make sense and feel cohesive and all that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, um, I think Ryan hit the nail on the head because it's not just a different version of the same story. It's a completely different medium. And, and so um, to that point, I mean, I, I think those are, that's one of two big challenges um, in my opinion is one is the running time. Uh, is condensing a novel of any length into a 90 220 minute uh, on screen show. And and then whatever that time length ends up being, um, shooting it in 15 days or 17 days, or uh, if you're really lucky, three months. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, studios and, and, and big, big money. But um, so I would say Condensing that story without sacrificing that story is a is a very real challenge. And then, um, like Ryan was saying, you are you're you're going back and forth between these two parties, um, but you're in their minds and you're you have insight into what they're feeling uh, and and how they're reacting to what the other person says and those missed wires that we all just want it like right. That's why we love this story and those characters. Um, and so then the challenge. Uh, starts from a writing sense, I would say, um, where how do you convey that on the script without somebody having an inner monologue, which is 
very hard tough to do to well. Pull off yeah. <laughs> yep. And tough for a reason. It's there are, yeah. in my opinion, more interesting ways to, to do it, right? And then and then second, even if it's through dialogue, how does it feel organic and not just pure exposition where you're like, oh, I'm just saying this because the audience needs to know it. And mm -hmm. then you realize you're watching a movie and it's not as fun. So so those two things, and there's a lot of inner dialogue and, and thought that then no pressure, Ryan. Um, but then it's on us to say with a, a quick look or, right. or, or how long we take to respond with our next line or a glance that the camera barely notices. Those little things that you don't realize all contribute to that organic mm -hmm. um, fictional character. I'm and, gonna, and yeah, no, please. please no, please. I, sorry, I'm interrupting you. I just wanted to hop on that really quick because I've found a lot of film is the things that you don't say. Like you say the line, mm -hmm. but it's this, it's the moments, yeah, like you're saying in between or the 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 look in someone's eye. Uh, the flexed effect. fingers. Oh. Yeah, no, really. The yeah, exactly. Yeah. The the, the, su the sudden shift in body weight says a lot. The mm -hmm. you know those little things, um, and if you're present in the moment, you don't need to plan those all. They they just come while you're filming. But um, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot, and I'm I acknowledge 100% my own bias because I and not everybody is like this. Not every actor, especially, is like this. But I will forever be a fan of cutting my own dialogue. And make and saying less if I can say it with a look or a pause or or a, a gesture um, that feels more how somebody would would react and and even little things I remember in in acting class my my mentor used to say um, it what's so tough is in real life nobody now in an interview like this it's different but for the most part in real life. Uh, a conversation, especially if it gets heated, right? And we go to the, the theater to see the highs and the lows. And and um, if there's emotion behind a conversation, nobody nobody says their part and then lets the other talk. And then you're talking over each other and you're trying to, and that's a real fine line when you're filming too, is, is making sure the audience hears what they need to hear while also it feels real, it feels organic, it feels off the cuff and in the moment. So there are a lot of challenges uh, an hour into that answer. Um, <laughs> and Speaking and of that cutting is, your dialogue, Jake. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Read the room, man. Um, but no, it, it's so true. And, and so that, honestly, that's probably one of the next things I would say that we need to tackle now that funding is, is secure is, um, is how to do that. Yeah. So good luck to the team, I guess. <laughs> I'll see Everyone's myself so out. excited. <laughs> yeah. No, this this is going to be great. We really do have a great team assembled, and um, even my earliest conversations with John Light, our director, one of the things we talked about was how much of this book is internal, and how crucial it was going to be that we have two leads who can portray those things, who can have those moments, who can organically portray these characters that we need to know on a deeper level when both of them have walls up. So imagine the relief I felt when we got these two on board. Like From that point uh, forward, I thought this is gonna work. So, oh, thank you so I'm much. excited. I'm gonna do my best to behave on set. I suspect it will last about two minutes and then <laughs> it will be chaos and everyone will be either annoyed or delighted by the time we're done. Absolutely I'm aiming delighted. for a mixture of both. I heard you have a co-conspirator, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I never go into any situation without someone I'm conspiring with. <laughs> you, need, again, you need to fall, right? Okay. <laughs> the way to go through well, life right there. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So we have one more hard-hitting question, and this one's coming from me. And feel free to think about it if you need to. I don't know if you've heard about this thing called video editing, but <laughs> if you need to take time, we can edit it down to make it look like you came up with it right away. Mm, I like so it. here Already. is this really vital question and your future on this project may depend on your answer. If you could cast me in any role across film, television, literature, what would it be? Insert thinking music. <laughs> Give it Get some the thought. Jeopardy theme going here. Yeah. Exactly. I'm probably going to have a few answers because the first one that comes to mind, we're already talking about Seeking Persephone. And we've had a previous conversation about how Sarah, about how Sarah needs to be a horse somewhere in the background. Um, <laughs> Ryan, I've already been working on my audition film. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> Jake, Jake knows so doesn't know so many no, important things. There's a lot of them. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't even think John be a knows horse about in this. Movie. <laughs> but that's, what is happening? That's the first <laughs> one I thought of. There's more, but like that has to be an option. I was us. born for that role. Yeah, I think there's no doubt. It's true. Can you talk that, Jake? Because go... that's a pretty good suggestion. <laughs> I just, I was just gonna say Abigail and the Aristocats, but I, I don't. Know. <laughs> yes, in the, in the yes. Film the two of them, the two of them together, yeah. shaking their tail together, feathers. Together, Ryan. I mean, we're already co-conspirators. Yeah. This was meant to be. Okay, Truly. those were excellent answers. Neither of you are fired. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh. But also, Sarah won't I mean, be playing a human. Is that what we decided? No, no, no. <laughs> Only animals. Through her own choices. <laughs> Only animals. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. I have been in a number of theater productions over the years, and I've never paid, played anyone over the age of 15. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out. <laughs> I told Ryan this. Um, I played Tiny Tim in a production of A Christmas Carol, even though I'm not a boy, and I was at the time. <laughs> 15 years old. So I'm going to toss that out there. Uh, I would like to, I would like to put in that tiny Tim is supposed to be like maybe six. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. If he's Sarah's, that old. Sarah's okay. going to play Artemis. <gasps> I, I have the dramatic part down guys. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay. I've if got you, had you covered. To play a human, it would be Artemis. I will play yeah. every part you know except Adam and Persephone. Oh. And you Ooh. know what, Sarah, you would make a fabulous Mrs. Weasley. You've even got the hair. Oh, yes. That actually would, would be really great. Actually, though. That would be great. I'd be yeah. great. I could picture that. Yeah, I'm for very sure. Very good at yelling at my children, too. So. <laughs> Typecast. <laughs> Love it. That's right. Love it. Well, I, I, I hope these ladies here and everyone listening knows why. I'm super excited for this production. We have a lot of fun, but everyone's also good at what they do. And that's the best kind of combination going to be a delight maybe we'll bring you guys back on after we're done filming to see if the three of us are still talking right <laughs> mm. it'll be a very going. different vibe perfect. i know perfect <laughs> oh my god well thank you so much for being here with us today this has been a lot of fun thank you um, for i feel having like us. everyone here is getting some of the education i'm desperately trying to get behind the scenes <laughs> so i am not what i refer to as the film industry deadweight that's what I have put under my title because no, I don't know. Get out of here with that. <laughs> no, guys, there's there's a learning curve. But anyway, uh, we always leave a question for our listeners. Our question for you this week is, um, what is a book you love that you would love to see made into a great film? Readers always have that favorite that they're holding out for. So leave that comment either on uh, the YouTube video, if you're watching us on YouTube or on our social media post. We'd love to hear from you. So thank you everyone for joining us this week on Between the Lines. And we cannot wait to see you next time.